3D printer video number three. Okay, uh, I just want to talk about some of the parts I'm, I'm using, some of the parts I've actually purchased. Um, I've stated already that you know most of this was bought from China, which which it was. Uh, so there are some components and some parts which I will highlight and, and show which parts I have bought from Britain and um, there are some you know some good parts that I've bought from Britain but as I said it's mostly mostly from China um, and it's down to a, a cost factor um, but I just want to just want to look at some of the components that anyone that's going to be building a 3d printer at the moment um, will be faced with the same choice um, that choice is linear rods um, now these were were sourced I believe these were actually sourced from Banggood there's a company called banggood.com um, I've used them for many many years for various things usually not for 3d printer parts but from other for other things and they're, they're usually a, a good company um, obviously they don't make the components they sell they're just a you know they're just a, re a reseller really so these are the 12s um, off of Banggood uh, I believe I bought them all together when I made the decision I bought 12s, 10s and the 8s and they're described exactly the same as what you would see on eBay optical axis smooth linear rod and um yeah, the, I think it's a slight deceiving what they're actually saying. Optical bit, well, this is optical, whereas if you look closely, which you will see, I'll try and get this to focus on. Now, yes, it's shiny, yes, it's smooth, but what you can see is basically the marks left from where this was ground now this has only been ground to a certain standard and then it's cut and shipped out the door now to demonstrate that excuse me camera I've made this uh, I've made this what you would call a nylon bearing. It's actually it's actually a seat tool. Um, it's a, it's a very hard wearing engineering plastic, and it's it's got good um, low friction characteristics. But what you can see now, first of all, I will explain. This has been drilled and reamed to a perfect twelve mill what's known as a h7 fit which is quite a loose fit to be fair um, but what you'll see is in some points of this rod it's very loose now bearing in mind this plastic has been reamed all the way through and the hole is pretty true for the for the distance that that is the hole is extremely true it's not perfect because it's only been done with a with a, um, a H7 reamer um, and only done on a small lathe. So precision, not aircraft quality, should I say, but it, it's good enough to show exactly what I'm trying to demonstrate here. This rod, if I twist that, that now doesn't move. <laughs> this rod not only is it not perfectly straight but it's also not perfect diameter and just by running your fingers you can you can feel you can feel that in places it gets wider and then narrower and there's even a change in friction on on your skin so now anyone who does works with hydraulics or um, if you've ever seen a digger out on the street or anything that has a proper hydraulic or a pneumatic piston, 
The rod that comes out of that piston is like a mirror. It is a perfect finish. It shouldn't even have a score or a scratch in it. Now, if these were optical axis, pure linear rods as described, you wouldn't see any of that. That is really pretty rough, I have to say. But this is just to prove the point, really. I'll put that back in the centre of the camera. That is almost, I can't push it to the end of there. Now, bearing in mind, this rod has no tension on it whatsoever. This, it's as straight as the day it arrived, albeit it probably wasn't packaged up too well, uh, shipped all the way from China. But no, th this, is, this is manufacturing that you can feel. There's, yeah, it's not great. But from China, including shipping, Probably about four pound for for the one rod, somewhere around that, and four pound for that rod. Maybe eight pound for the pair. Uh, I think for the whole six rods, I think it cost me under thirty pound, including shipping. So that that is extremely cheap. Now, if I was to buy that rod, a proper linear bearing in Britain, now you can go on eBay um, and buy them from reputable suppliers, but you're looking at, I suppose, 25 to 30 pound just for the rod on its own. But you'll get a proper straight linear optical shaft, which these are not. These are purely some hardening. I mean, it's hardened, but I suspect not to any any real depth in in the material it's probably come on camera it's probably an extreme surface coating a few microns and if that's it not a not a proper hardened shaft um, I mean just by pressing <laughs> two fingers or a finger and a thumb it will deflect now I know we're, this is only a 3D printer, it's not going to be carrying too much weight, but the idea of this whole thing for me was a precision printer that doesn't flex anywhere. That was the one one main aim of the goal. Um, yeah, so anyway, so this proves the point. These aren't as, as good as you might think they are, but they will probably serve the purpose. This just demonstrates that yeah they're not great but luckily <clears throat> these arrived today now these I also bought from Banggood um, I did try seeing if I could buy them at a reasonable price in Britain including from a very good company which I have bought a lot of stuff from called UK Maker Hut um, they're on eBay, but still, they're, I think these are about 13 or 14, maybe even 15 pound for a 12 mil bearing. So these are what I've got from China. Hansen bearing. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yeah, so they've arrived today. I've opened one so far of the four. Now, okay. If I'd have bought that in Britain, I know it's at least 12 99 13 quid. So that's £13 in Britain, cheapest I could find. From China, Banggood, delivered £19.99p. 20 quid for all four. Yeah. yeah. So, here they are. Now these have taken a long time. Um, I, I think if I was to check... I'd say about, yeah, over four weeks, coming on for five. But they arrived today. Um, the box packaging got a little bit wet. Um, in first inspection, when I opened this one, 
Not that you can really see it now, because I've cleaned it out. But in here was all the shavings of when they press the bearing in. Obviously, it's quite a tight fit. As they press the bearing in, it shaves off any of the abnormalities of the aluminium and the coating. And that was just resting nicely in the seat. Um, there was a little bit inside. I haven't opened this up to clean it out yet. I probably will do that, but I'll probably do that for all four. So the one thing to bear in mind when you buy it from China, don't just open it up and stick it on and think, yeah, great, I've, I've done what I need to do. No, you've got these cheap because for one thing, they're mass manufactured and they are packaged and shoved out the door as fast as they can do it. And in that process, I don't know what that is, bit of plastic, oh, there we go. In that process, come on, there you can see a tiny piece of swarf. And I can see that is metal, that is not plastic. And if we have a look... Now this one's not as bad as the, as the first one I opened. The first one was... Yeah, it was like a bird's nest in there. Um, that one's not too bad. Let's, let's go for a third. I mean for five pound I'm not going to grumble. I only actually need two I think. Um, to be fair. Look at this one. That doesn't look, that looks okay. Um, that one looks okay. No, maybe not so great on the inside. No. And there. Hard to see, but that is swarth. That is small pieces of aluminium with the grease. So if it's on there, it's in there. If it's in there, those little tiny ball bearings will only munch it up and Put even more score lines than already exist on these beautiful shafts. Or not so beautiful. Yeah. You have to take it with a pinch of salt, of course, buying anything off of eBay and from China. And with a budget in mind, you get what you pay for. But considering I mean, that is still cheaper than buying one of these from the UK as a proper rod. And um, this is not an industrial machine. This is a 3D printer that's going to be moving probably a, a few hundred kilo mass around at most. So over-engineered is, is obvious on this instance. So I'm not too worried. I think that's the thing, if, if you're going to buy cheap, then check it all out, clean it up if need be, and over-engineer it, and then you can't go wrong. If you under-engineer it and you don't clean it up, oh crikey, I mean let's look at that one, the last one, oh yeah. Let's just put that one straight in our printer, shall we, and shag the shaft right up. No, I don't think so. But there we go, yeah. Four bearings, under £20, delivered, but I mean, a clean up, great, they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be as good as I need them to be. Shafts, I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, I think what I will do, is I haven't tried these yet, the only thing I've put on these shafts so far is this collar which um, I was considering actually using it as a, as a bearing. This is going to be the, the slide for the platform. So there's only going to be 
some brackets coming off of here to hold the platform and let's face it the platform only goes up in tiny amounts or up and down in tiny amounts and then that's it it's not going to be moving around too much so I was considering just using a seat tool and making my own uh, carriage or whatever I'm still going to make any own carriage but yeah instead of using these things because these were taking a long time to turn up so I thought well I'd make something I've machined a bit of a flat on there to do something across and screw into it. But yeah, I mean, that is so... That is just impossible. I would have had to open that, this, right up. And then if I'd have opened it up so it was loose here, I mean, how sloppy would it be there? I mean, you spin it and... Oh, lovely free, and then solid. Which means not only is this not perfectly round, it's it's probably eccentric, it's probably not straight, and it's not in perfect diameter. I, you can feel that, I can feel that there. There's a slight ridge right there. <laughs> so yeah, get what you pay for, but over-engineer it, and then, you well, know, you can't go wrong, I don't think. I'm building a printer, not a not a laser photocopier. So uh, let's just try a bearing on there and just see if it does make a, a big difference. I've done that that tighter than I thought. Right. Off she comes. Oh. So, yeah, that's all that was. I only made the one. <laughs> Because I knew how sh bad it was. Okay. So that's. Let's make sure it's not the one that's full of swarf. Mm, this one has got a bit on it, actually, so we won't use that one. No, nope, not that one. Oh, not using that one. That one's the worst. This is, this is the one I've already partly cleaned out. That's better. And there's still a bit there. Yeah, they need a. These need to. Circle it out, get the bearing out, flush it, re-grease it, put it back together. I advise anyone who's buying these bearings off of eBay, they're all going to be the same. Trust me, even if you don't see it there, it's inside. I've, I've, I've opened other ones up and they've all been the same. The only exception will probably be these sorts of things. The shielded. Um... Reason being is they are generally shielded in a in a controlled environment, and this, they're packaged as generally by a machine before the, anyone can get their hands on them. Whereas these are uh, quickly machined, dumped in a bin, then they're coated, and then someone comes along physically will shove a bearing in there by hand, probably with a block of wood to smack it in with. Yeah, but anyway, this is the clean one. Let's just try and see if we got an improvement. Well, yeah, there's no real grease in this bearing at the moment. It does need greasing, and I, that some of this could be crap in the bearing. But that does that come to an immediate halt there. Sometimes, when you first put it on, if you just run it backwards and forwards, but and moving the bearing back a little bit each time, and then just check the shaft. And by doing that, you can see if anything shiny's come off. Mm. Doesn't appear to be, but it doesn't feel that great. But it's not there now. Yeah, I think that I think there is dirt in that bearing. That's fine now. Cleaning and greasing. That's the solution here. 
So anyway, let's just make sure it's a bit more free running than my uh, homemade piece of junk. It's not great, I will admit. That's exactly where the acetal one would um, start to bind up, is here. About a third of the way at one end there. And towards the end, but that's all right there. Mm, no, it's a bit tight there. A bit tight there, but practically no lubricant grease in these bearings at the moment, and oh, oh. it doesn't really sound like bearing on a shaft, that sounds more like. Scraping something across a metal floor. Hmm, yeah, I'm not overly impressed, but I'm sure it'll be fine. My main concern was um, just having this as free running as possible. Uh, with Core XY, especially, which is what I'm going to be doing, um, Core XY will have the belt running basically down this side of, um, not on these linears, on, on the tens and the eights, but yeah, if the tens and the eights aren't free, it can bind up on core X, Y. I mean, it can bind up here, right, even on the, on what I'm going to use these for. But anything that binds up is just not, not good. That's, I mean, that's why we're going to fit linears. But we shall see. That will probably free up over time. But yeah, there we go. So, uh, Cheap linear rails, um, stated as optical access linear rod, is um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shiny bit of shiny bit of bar really. Um, that's all I would say. But it's on a budget. So I shall shut up and uh, get on with building. Now I have these. To continue with um, yeah end of video really um, on to the next bit thanks for watching